Valentine's Day is coming up, so I need to make her a, a present. Um, got some scrap wood she would have utilized, but it was a wood crack the other day, and they had red heart um, planks like this. And I thought, what better than uh, to use a wood called red heart incorporated into a Valentine's present? <laughs> What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this as an accent. I'm going to, I have some um, thin walnut cut off. Yeah, about five sixteenths of an inch thick. And I'm going to make a small four by four box, be about a little over two inches tall. The music box will sit down inside of it. I'm going to cut a little, just a very simple curve in the bottom to kind of give it a little bit legs raise it up, and then to the bottom, I'm gonna use this thin craft plywood. Um, I'm thinking this might resonate well with the music box, not sure. And then I'll be able to cut off um, a piece of this for the top, then I'm going to carve a little something out of the, the red heart, and I might try to incorporate the red heart around the edges as a little bit of a trim. We'll see how that goes. Uh, so. That's what we're gonna do. So let's get started by cutting up the boards we need. Then we'll cut the angles on them and get it glued up. Um, I have to route the bottom in it and then start working on what I want to carve for the top. Let's get going.
So what I'll show you here is my jig that I made. Um, cut the arc that I wanted in the legs, then tried to line up where it would be centered. And then I took one of the cutoffs and laid it here so what the leg would lay, or the side would lay straight in here, and I was able to mark that off nice and even. It did take me a little bit of time to get it centered because my panel here was a little bit off center, but that was just simply getting the center of the arc matched up to the center of the board and then using this to as a guide so the rest of them would come out easy.
I've done some carving over the years, but never really did a lot of relief carving like in furniture. And I thought it would be a good skill to hone with doing uh, furniture restoration. It would come in convenient sometimes, and as well as enhancing some of my new builds like this music box. So it's a lot of fun to, to pick up a mallet and chisel and start trying to do a new carving. So that's a little bit of cleanup. <clears throat> what I did is I took the lid and I put a rabbit around the edges and I trimmed up, <clears throat> cut out some little pieces of the red heart, <clears throat> which I'm now going to miter and put around the edges for a little trim detail. So that's what I'm going to do first. But first, there's a little bit of difference here in these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my router plane <clears throat> and try and get this trimmed up. tear out of that one corner but I think we'll be okay I'll have to <laughs> fill that in now once I got the rabbits all squared and trimmed up I was worked on the red heart trim to get it square and matched up And once I got those fitting the way I wanted them to, I started to miter the edges. I'm using this framing guillotine type 
miter. Uh, it's very accurate and I can trim really small pieces. You could also use a shooting board or a miter box uh, to do the same thing. But this is very convenient and very precise. So now that I got the three sides completed in length, I'm put it over to the side till that uh, wood filler dried. And now I'm gonna secure the three sides that are cut so that they won't move. And then I will be able to trim the last piece till it fits properly. Now that I got all the pieces um, trimmed to the right length, I'll get the whole thing glued up. And using some rubber bands is to hold it tight and some clamps to keep it flat and square into the, the rabbit. And just a few more clamps since just didn't seem to have enough clamps on it. After the glue dried, I got it out, and then I used a small block plane to trim up the, the edges flat. And then trim the surface delicately without trying to get into the walnut too much. Now it's time to fit up hinges on the box. Um, very thin wood means very small hinges and cutting the mortise is a very delicate process. After some light chisel work, I used the small router plane to get the depth all consistent and even for the hinges. Trimming out a little bit of that extra stuff. And I'm using a, a gimlet. It's like a small drill that you use with your hand. Um, find that it's much, much more safe to drill the small holes for tiny like number two screws um, and it works really well and I've matched up the hinges to the lid and I'm going to again trim that out with the chisel and then a router plane taking off one of the hinges so that I can check the size and depth I had to be careful when the lid 
hinges because the screws were too long. They would have popped out through the top of the lid. So I just, this is a brass hit uh, screws. I just took a pair of diagonal cutters and clipped off the end of them. Uh, they went in just fine. And once the lid's on, it was time to install the music box. This is a pretty simple process. You need to drill a hole so that the winding mechanism can get down through the bottom and the screws to hold it onto the base. It was amazing how much louder the music box is once it's screwed onto that base. I put some slack on it already. I uh, decided just to kind of touch it up with just a little bit more before I added the carving. And a little bit of shellac on the, the carving. You see I, I put a glaze on it to kind of highlight some of the carving and I used a little gold rub and buff in the center to bring out the center of the flower. And then just going to glue it on with some tight bond, a little CA glue. It was all ready for a romantic dinner. Thanks for stopping by.